So Kevin Roberts, one of our newest partners here at the Barbarian Hour, Jared, he is selling Resolite mats. He's uh, gunning to be their top salesman of the year for Resolite out of Pennsylvania. And uh, he's out of the Pacific Northwest, out North Idaho, uh, Eastern Washington. And he seems to be gaining momentum, and we've been working with him a lot. Uh, I'll be out there for camps later on at his new facility, the Dungeon. You've been working with him for years, right? Yeah, I've been working for, for Kevin for years. And then that was how Ian ended up at Oregon State is with uh, Coach Kevin Roberts. So you can check out Coach Roberts at robertswrestling.com. First things first, welcome to the Barbarian Hour. And uh, you guys are fresh off of a third place finish in the state of Ohio in D1 to your league rival, Brexville. Yeah. Hey, thanks for, thanks for having me on. I, yeah, man. I love what you guys do. Yeah. This is awesome. I enjoy listening to you guys uh, when you release all these awesome podcasts. So happy to be here. Yeah. We, you know, it was, a, it was a fun state tournament with St. Ed's and Brexville, obviously awesome, awesome teams, awesome coaches. And, you know, it was a fun fight and, you know, good weekend. So you guys had another state champ this year at 170. How many state champs? So far, like how many in program history from those guys in the forties to all the way to now from Bobby Jones to Tevin Nello, three-time state champ. How many state champs in program history for Wadsworth? Um, I'm going to say we're in the twenties. I don't have the exact number. G would have that, but I would say we're in the twenties counting those 40 guys. And then, you know, Bobby, a couple, Brad Squire had a couple, Tavanello had a couple, you know, so yeah, I mean, it, it, it's going, it's rolling. It's a lot of fun. How heated is the rivalry with Brexville? You guys are in the same league, right? Yeah. <laughs> what, what is the last, give me the la the record of the last six, six matches, how, how whether it's duels, the league tournament, I got to get you some swag, by the way. I, I don't know yeah. if I've given you any of this yet. We got to get you some swag. But what is the record with Brexville? Let's just say the last three years, last six times you guys have wrestled, whether it's the league tournament, whether it's a duel, it's always coming down to the last weight. It, it, even in the tournaments, it's wild. But what's your yeah. record against them in the last, like, three years, let's say? Three years, I'd say it's probably three, three and three. Um, this year, early in the season, we dueled them, came down to heavyweight. Um, we, got a, we were losing – we were losing, then they're heavy. We took them down, so to win at the at the very end. Um, then at the state duels, they did they beat us, and I think it was a three point match. So it, it's just always fun, you know. Then we get to the state tournament, it's a you know point and a half difference, you know, just a match or two difference, and it's just it's a fun rivalry though. Coach Haverdale is awesome, you know. We make it fun. He does a great job, you know. We're up on the stage at Brexville, you know in their, uh, you know, auditorium. It's just fun. You know, it's a fun rivalry, but it does get heated. And, you know, we, we always want to beat Brexville. I love it. I think it's an awesome rivalry. And to be league, you know, league opponents. And usually you guys are both in the top 55, or I'm sorry, top 25, always in the top 50 between the two teams yeah. in the United States of yeah. America, which is impressive in itself. And how the transition went from Gramulia to you is what's amazing to me and how you guys, there hasn't been a drop off. It's pretty incredible, actually. How do you guys sustain that, that intensity, that excellence and, and that tradition of Wadsworth wrestling from Grimulia to Winger? How'd you do it? Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, I, trusting in the, trusting in what G's taught me, trusting in Wadsworth and those kids feed off that. They believe in Wadsworth wrestling. They believe in, the program and the tradition, like you said, all, you know, all our state champs are hanging up on our wall. They, they want to be there. They want to be the next person on the wall. And, you know, that means a lot to them. And the banners that we have hung in our gym and in our room, you know, that, that means a lot to them as well. So, you know, they want to put the work in. They, they want to be the team that keeps the tradition going and keeps that, um, you know, all that excitement rolling in the, in the program. So, you know, I learned so much from G, but I have so many great people around me as, as in our coaching staff, G's still around. He's down doing the middle school. He's still at youth practices. So he's a huge help, but just our, our assistant coaches, our alumni, 
all the people still around is uh, a huge part of it. And, and those kids have grown up watching the tradition. You know, they start wrestling at five years old. We keep it such a, a tight knit group with our youth, middle school and high school that they see all this stuff happen and, and they think it's expected of them, you know, and they keep that rolling, which is fun. So what's wild is these kids now would have been little kids, like you're saying, that have been five, six, seven, eight years old, some of them 10 years old. They watched your team be the first public school and geez, oh, Pete's, what it had to be from the seventies or early eighties because it yeah. was, it was shared by, it was the big division in Ohio was shared by the titles were shared by Walsh, St. Ed's obviously, and then Cleveland St. Joe before they became VASG. I think those were all the championship teams. If I've got that right, Chanel might even a bit, Chanel might've won the big school ones. I know they won the yeah. other two divisions. It's wild though, right? So when you think about that, you guys were the first public school to win and knock off St. Edward. And was it 2010 or your, was it your junior year? 2010. Yep, junior 2010. year. 2010. It was wild. It was yeah. wild. Um, I just watched the match with Loudon Gordon and Mark Martin. And that was the one. I love he, it. Yeah. He pinned him. He pinned. Yeah. He, he pinned him, and then it was like all the pressure was off. Like Tavanella, I think it was Busan in the finals too, if I've got that right. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, uh, Busan, yeah, uh, Loudon put us in lead in the lead. Then it became Busan. Busan lost. Well, Brad Brad Squire had to win. Then Busan lost, and then Tavanello did seal the deal at 215 that year in overtime takedown. Then the pressure was off for Ben, and then he ended up winning, beating uh, Brexville too. So four champs that year. Um, yeah, you got you had uh yeah, Loudon, Brad, um, Tavanello and Ben. And I hope wow. I'm not forgetting someone. Yeah. Did you have did Kagan make the the finals that year? K- Kagan was a yep, I think yep, you had Kagan six was a finalist. finalist. You had six yeah. finalists that year? Yeah. Yep. Wow. That is unreal. Yeah. And I know I was there, I covered it, but it's like yeah. you even like verbalize yeah. it and think out of it because I, I made a DVD and I gave it to Coach G. And then he said yeah. he pl- you guys played it on like your local cable. <laughs> we do. We we still play it, Zeb. I we love still it. show our we still show our kids that those, you know, that Loud and Gordon match brings a lot of energy and. Ex- I mean, they all do, but you know that was kind of a fun one. So we love showing the the team that to kind of kick off the year and show them T- Tavanello's win just to bring that excitement and show them that hey, this can be done here at Wadsworth and. You know, you got to believe it as these guys did. So kind of cool. And we're actually, that team is being inducted to the Medina County Hall of Fame this summer, which is cool to get everyone back together and, you know, seeing all those guys again. So kind of fun. So, you know, like I said, the success has been sustained. You know, John Gramulia came. He's a, he's from Cleveland, Ohio. That's the other crazy thing about that guy. Yep. He's just gritty and tough. I like that guy. Yeah, and he is. I remember the state duels were at Wadsworth and him and Dave Riggs exchanged words and it was right in front of my camera. It was, it was one of the, like, these guys are intense. These guys want to win. And then they followed you guys up a couple years after that. And they won the the championship. I was 14 and they had a bunch of champs. They did a similar thing to you guys and and Maslin Perry and what he built there. It was incredible. But, like, Absolutely. to see those two guys getting after and things getting a little chippy, I think they actually might have, like, pushed each other or there was at least, like, a <laughs> – like, like a <laughs> dude, it was awesome. I'm sure, yeah. Was like, Dave Riggs was like, don't ever touch me again. It was <laughs> awesome. Don't you ever touch me yeah. again. I was like, these dudes yeah. are out of their minds. It's awesome. I, I think that's – I think that's why they, you know, argue, you know, hit heads a little bit because they're similar guys. You know, they they care so much for their program. They're going to fight for their program, for their guys. And, I mean, I have a ton of respect for Coach Riggs and what he did there as well. Just it was fun to watch them coach against each other. But to see them now, it's kind of fun because, you know, they have so much respect for each other. They talk to each other. And, you know, they just love the robberies too. You were in that duel. It was a, it was a Maslin Perry versus Wadsworth. You were in that. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys win? Yeah, we won. I love it. In 2010. Yeah. Yeah. At your yeah. place. We had at our place. We had them. It was a it was a heck of a duel too. We had them in the semis. We beat them and then went on and beat Eds. 
So so crazy, dude. Yeah, I love yeah. it, and I have all those matches. I have them like they're on my yeah. somewhere on my my YouTube channel. <laughs> so you can still go and watch. I think you can just Google into my search or put it in my search on YouTube. And it brings it awesome, pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, extensive uh, library of Wadsworth wrestling on Ohio Cast. So obviously, we people got to go check that out. Um, yeah. Have you guys won? You know, I, I started out something that's going to be edited out. People aren't going to see it. Um, but a little egg on my face, so I don't mind bringing it up. Have you guys won any type of runner-up? I know you guys haven't been champ. As you as yeah. the head coach, have you guys won a state trophy yet? No. Nope. This was our third this year. Um, I you know, the pandemic, we had a good district tournament. We beat Brexville at the di- – tied Brexville, sorry, at the districts that – Nice tied the district. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the we COVID did. district. The, the end COVID of the, district, the, yeah. The, the state tournament that year. Yeah, another fun battle with them. Um, then the year before, fourth and maybe fifth. So, no, not a, not a team runner-up finish, not a state championship, but – I mean, that's obviously what we're striving for, you know, and that our guys are buying into. So we, we know it can be done. It's just, you know, it's a lot of work and we've got a lot of good teams around us to keep pushing us. How, how much does that drive you as a coach? And obviously I know drives the kids. I see how your kids work really hard, Clay. How, do, how much yeah. does that drive you as a coach at Wadsworth being Wadsworth born and, uh, you know, born and raised um, here? It sounds like your daughters are Wadsworth born and raised now, right? Yeah, they are. Yep. Well, how, how much does uh, this yeah, drive I mean, you though? Yeah, I love Wadsworth. I mean, that's why I wanted to, I, I live here, grew up here, always want to be here. Um, love the program, love the people, part of it. So, I mean, it drives me every day, and I just know, you know, not not for me, but for them. I know what it felt like to to win a team state title, and how those connections continue, you know, ten, eleven years down the road, and you know how much fun that is. And I want them to have that um, same feeling, that's those same relationships with teammates, and and to be a part of that tradition. So that's what drives me to keep, you know, motivating these kids and let them experience something so so great. How many kids now for you? I have two. Two daughters? Two two daughters, four and two. Four, oh, five and three. We're staggered a little bit, but I, I'm <laughs> feeling your pain. So listen, I, I was like, oh, hey, right, texting you, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to put my kids to sleep. And then we started running around, oh, can't catch me, and they were doing that thing. <laughs> and they smacked heads, and the one dude's nose started leaking. It wasn't like a like a – yeah. Like a clay wanger bleeder, you know, it wasn't <laughs> like, a, like a gusher, like a head wound, but it was like, I'm like, oh no, he's hurt. And I'm like, all stressed out. My wife's like, he's fine, just relax. Go do your show and I'll put him to bed. But I like, they cracked heads. Do the girls love yeah. it? Wild and crazy. Do the wanger girls get as wild and crazy as the Miller boys? I don't know about your boys, that, but they, yeah, there's some battles, surprisingly, between these two. It's every day fights and we're starting to get in that that age of uh you know they want every toy the other one has and it, it you know they're pulling at it then it becomes a they're biting or they're fighting it's just <laughs> but we don't have any biting i'm not gonna lie to you i cannot i cannot top the biting there's no biting here we're not we're on no a girl thing. House. i'm not gonna lie to you must be a girl thing where they're biting there's a lot of punches I tell you what, my son Thomas's face got hamburgered last week. <laughs> He's getting punched in the face. That that actually stressed didn't stress me out because they had boxing gloves on. But when, he, when they smacked heads tonight, I was like worried. Like I was like, oh, but like they're fine, they're good to go. But um, yeah. it's just wild I to see it. it come full circle because I remember you as a yeah. kid. Because you obviously yeah. we've talked about this before. You and Ian were the same weights. You placed in yep. his OC weight. Yeah, I did. Took like eighth, I think. Yeah, we. Yeah, eighth. Yeah, we did a. Then it, if he the year, I don't. Did he win flow that year? Or did he get second? No, he I, broke I, his I wrist. In the, he broke his wrist yeah. in the finals versus Joey Davis. Right. He lost. And then I, I think I was fifth that year there. We, and then when, that's when we went to Kent. That that was our senior year, and then we went on at Kent together. So hey, he just texted me the other day actually about he wants guys because he wants guys because you got yeah. guys. That's why. <laughs> Hey, let me yeah, tell you something about Ian. We had him on the other – we had him up uh, a couple yeah, of weeks ago. I saw. 
Yeah, he is really a different guy. He is like a mature, and, and you know, that's what we want out of you guys. That's the whole point yeah. of everything we do. But Ian was like a mumbler. He didn't yeah. say much. Now that this cat will talk your ear off, and it's, it's like it. kind of refreshing to see. Uh, he figured out the game, first off. You got to yeah. build relationships. Second off, you got to learn how to treat people, you know, mumbling. Yeah. Hey, come to me. I'm Ian Miller. No, and that's not how this works. And so for that, I'm super proud of him. The fact that he's yeah, yeah. reaching out to you and he understands how good your program is and they get a Wadsworth guy on the, the Appalachian state team would, would be huge for them. Right. I, they were actually on, um, they were on Boffman. I think, I think they were on him Oregon yeah. when he was at Oregon state. Right. Yeah. I yep. think Zaleski actually they came. Were, yeah. Him. He came, he came down to Wadsworth. Yeah. He yeah. spent a weekend here. Yeah. So there cool. you go. There you go. Like when, when Jim Zaleski is doing that, you know, first off, Jim Zaleski is a legend. You know that. Right. Um, Jim Zaleski is, did you know he's the NCAA wrestler of the decade for the 1980s? Really? He I was. I did not know that. What Nolf and what Rutherford and what Bo Nickel are to Penn State, what David Taylor what is to Penn State and Ed Ruth. That's what Jim Zaleski was to the 1980s Iowa. I, I want you to think about it. It's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, it's crazy. Amazing. And I don't think, and it's, and here's the crazy thing about it. First off, he tech falled Nate Carr in a match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> in <a> college match. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't think people get it, though. It's wild. Yeah. And obviously, the kids now don't really get it, right? And Jim, he's at the, you know, he's at the end of his coaching career. You know, he just took an NAIA yeah. job in, in uh, North Dakota, Jamestown, North yeah. Dakota. G- great guy, though. But I think that, yes. that was a big part of Ian's development. Because I don't know, did, did you actually talk to Ian at all? Have you, like, spoken to him or just talked? Yeah, and we, I think we spoke, we talked on the phone a couple times, but I, I remember talking with him and he said how much, how awesome Zaleski is and, I, you know, we had a couple conversations about him, um, and, and it was cool. I mean, he really gave a lot of credit to him when we did speak, and um, we we recently talked this summer too when he, he was already at App. And I mean, I, I mean, he's always been great to me. Ian has, and I, I thank him. You know, we we had some fun at Ken, and you know, enjoyed training together. And I'm thankful to still you know have that connection and hopefully send guys there and they, you know, looking at our guys is, is a great thing. So uh, I'm thankful to talk to him when I can. Did he throw you into the bike that time I came into the room and you were all mummied like toothache. You had like the toothache, you had the, the wrap here, you had the gable wrap and then you had the toothache wrap and then you had. I think so. You had a bunch of stitches. I'm like, Clay, what happened? You're like, oh, I got thrown yeah. into the bike. It, it, was, I it think him? was him. It was. I think it was. <laughs> I might not remember fully, and you but you want to send guys to him. I would be eternally like, dude, you made me have the toothache head wrap. I <laughs> screw you. I had to have a head diaper. I'm never sending a guy to you. Screw they off. Shaved half my head. They had to shave half my so head. It was so ridiculous, did you? Had the toothache. A... You had the toothache thing, and I was like, it was insane. I'm like, yeah, this guy's tough. This dude's <laughs> just tough. I love it, and I always remember because you, when you guys did wrestle. As as youth, you always yeah. gave him fits. I do remember that, and he because yeah, he couldn't, he, but... dude. He didn't blow your doors off. He didn't hit you with all the flying no. bandinis. And I was always like, this dude's just gritty. And then the day I came in, I was like, all right, <laughs> maybe, maybe things got a little nutty here. I don't know. <laughs> he threw into the airdynes, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, not in a you know. We just get oh, wrestling. You know? right? I, get I don't. It. Yeah. Yeah, just wrestling, and I mean, I like that. I mean, that's fun, you know. We know there's no hard feelings. It was just we we're getting after it, and happened that happened, and it's all right. It all you're a little out. sick in the head. That's what I like about you. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I think it's a good. It's fun. a good quality, of Clay Winger. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, you guys, you guys, um, you know, you wrestled in Division One in college. So you you really get it, man. You really understand what it takes to get to the next level. And, you know, you were, you were there all five years with Ian. You were a 157, yeah. 165. So, I mean, you're behind yeah. him, but you're battling him yeah. for airdyne stitches. Yeah. And um, <laughs> what, is, what is the biggest thing, you know, 
these kids are going through the process. We had Clinton Wasser on last night. We had Jeff Breeze on last night, two college coaches in Ohio, NC awesome. one in yeah. Utah. What's the biggest thing, Clay, that, that kids just aren't ready for when it comes to the jump to, to NCAA D1? You know, and I'm, I'm not just just D1 honk. I love D2. I think it's obviously jumping levels. You guys got a – what do you got? You got a Clint Sponseller right down the road. You got yep. – you're Northeast style. You guys are in really fertile grounds for NCAA D2 wrestling. What's the yeah. biggest jump that kids don't get or parents don't get about from – D1 high school, state champions in Ohio, top five, 10 team in the country to that jump to division one wrestling. Yeah. I mean, I think you kind of said it, you say, you got to follow the process. And I mean, that's our, that's our slogan at Wadge. You got to follow the process because you jump into a D1 room, you know, you may be a state champ, a couple times state champ, and you're going to take your beatings, you know, no matter who you're very rarely. I mean, there, there's some great guys, I understand, but you know, a lot of people have to know, jump in that room and get their, you know, get their butt kicked a little bit. And you got to keep trusting that process and knowing, keeping that positive attitude and knowing that you're going to get better in this situation. And, and that's what we tell our young high school guys. You got to follow what, you know, coming from middle school, we have a lot of good kids come in and, you know, they may not be in the lineup right away. And, you know, we tell them you got to follow the process. You got to believe and, and keep growing from the people you're around, you know, I got to wrestle with Ian, Mike De Palma, Tyler Buckwalter, be around Dustin Kill. I mean, that, that's awesome. I learned so much from that and, and, be, and got so much better from that. So you got to take it in and you can't beat yourself up. And, you know, your parents have to understand that too. I think it's hard for parents, for, you know, a state champ, and then they have to go to college and see their kid take some lumps. But, you know, you got to trust that process and know, you know, if you keep buying in, good things will happen. You're going to get better. You're going to learn a lot from a lot of good people and, you know, take advantage of that. I have a lot of great, a lot of great friends and people I use to, to learn from and talk to and, you know, from being at Kent. So it, it, it's just, you know, keep trusting the process and you got to grind a little bit. So you guys have a huge pipeline to the football team. Uh, you guys yeah. had a four-time state placer who was also Mr. Ohio in football. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but they do not pick that name out of a hat. <laughs> no. You've got to be elite. If you look at some of the past, uh, Mr. Ohio's, a lot of NFL football players. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think we've, I mean, I don't know, one of the greatest to ever do it, any level. We already know he's the greatest college player. One of the greatest defensive backs in Ohio history. Uh, obviously, Charles Woodson. He was a Mr. Ohio. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Curtis Enos, right. Mr. Ohio, Robert Smith, Mr. Ohio, Andy Katzenmore, Mr. Ohio. Like we have all these really good guys, elite guys. You had a guy who was a wrestling guy who was going to wrestle in college. I think he, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was about to be on UVA's team. Yep. yep. Right. He was, he was, but, but talk about, you know, having Mr. Ohio in football, talk about what he's doing now. And just give us a run now what it's like to have an elite an elite football player, a quarterback, who's yeah. an upper weight, wrestling for Wadsworth. Yeah. I mean, I actually saw his dad today, which was – I haven't seen him in a while. Well, first off, um, what's the relationship between all of them, all the all the Buffmans in, in Wadsworth? Because you got a Cornell yeah. one. you got Are they all yeah. related? Who's who? Who's who? Run all the Buffmans. Yeah, I, I run the Buffmans. So Todd Boffman is the dad of who was our youth coach for a long time of Christian who went to wrestle at Lake Erie. He was a year behind me. Um, he was on the state championship team. He now coaches with me. He's, and he's then buddies his, with this guy. I, this guy I coached and taught. And now I yeah. teach with Justin. Toth. Toth. Yeah. Him and Toth Best are friends. buddies. Yeah. Really yep. good friends. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Love yep. Toth. Yeah. Awesome guy. And then uh, the next one down is Noah. That's the Cornell two-time state champ. And then the next one down is Luke, which is who's at Indiana. That's the side of the Boffmans. And then you got the other Boffman side. The oldest was Brandon. Are they he, he brothers? Are those dads brothers? Are they cousins? No, no, no relation at all. These two Come Boffmans. on, really? I know. No. Spelled the same. Because some people say Boffman, some people say Boffman. Yeah. And they're both Boffman. Yeah. That's so, crazy. Yep. So, so then the other, the other side, side is, down for me. The other side just two. Brandon Boffman, he was uh, – he started for us for, 
you know, uh, three, maybe three years, I think. He, he, he was a good, he was a good wrestler. Then hit, then there's Joey. And uh, they actually have a younger sister who's just a freshman. That is a absolute freak um, basketball player and volleyball player. So very athletic. Well, Mr. Fan. Ohio is Joey. Mr. Mr. Joey. Mr. Ohio is Joey Boffman. Yep. All right. Who, who wrestled for Cornell? Noah well, Boffman. He's, Noah. he's on the other side. Noah's a yeah. two-time state champ. What Correct. was Joey Boffman's highest finish for you guys at Wadsworth? Second. Twice. He was a runner-up twice. Who was he runner-up okay. to? Do you remember? Emil. Emil from Perry. The, his, that would be his Sunland. junior year. Yep, yep. And then it was um, Liberty. Um, why, am I, why am I not getting it? Lawson. First sophomore year. Got it. I think okay. he got f- fifth his freshman year, second, second. Senior year, he lost in the semis to – I think a LaSalle kid and then got um, fit, got third that year. So those are solid finishes, by the way. Yeah, they are. I mean, so now he was going to go to UVA and wrestle for Steve Garland. Right. And then I think the light bulb went on. Yeah. Some mid-major football offers started to come in. Yeah. Where is he now? He's at Elon and uh, he's, He's their starting quarterback. He had a great because of COVID. He had a, they played in the spring. He had a great say, they, spring. They just played now, didn't they? Yeah, he had a great spring. Starting quarterback, he graduated in three years. So now he's going. He's a very smart, hardworking kid academically. So he's still got time. So he's going to go get his masters now and, and continue to play there. So he's doing a, a tremendous job at Elon and loving football. Looks like doing, well, doing great. Playing quarterback, run in just like he is. He's a tremendous athlete. What did he do as a senior that like put him apart to be Mr. Ohio? What do you think it was about him? Obviously, the wrestling. They they look at that. You know, they look at the other sports. Yeah. Obviously, they do. What do you think? What what was the big moment for him? Like, did he throw for him inordinate amount of touchdowns and rushing? What was what was his big thing that that you think got him noticed to be uh, recognized as Mr. Ohio? I, I'd say his rushing is really good he can really run the ball and <clears throat> break tackles he's you know he, he's very agile I mean he's quick but he also is senior his junior year is very he was more of a rusher but I think his senior year he put them both together so he was he was passing running he, he kind of just did it all he, he really led that team so I, I think when he put them both together it's really what made him stand out because he had a great junior year too but it was mainly Rush, 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 and then he yeah. put them both together. And then he became awesome. a, he became an aerial watch. threat. You could throw the ball. Now all of a sudden you got some wide receivers. Now yeah. you're a deep threat down the field. Now you're worried about him running the ball on you for ten yards a pop. Yeah. He can break one in the open field. You know, I, yeah, that's a nightmare. It just doesn't translate that well into the NFL though, because <laughs> the guys, yeah. <laughs> all the guys are trying to murder you, and <laughs> you don't really get to do it for very long, right? Um, what's yeah, it? Lamar right, Jackson is right. incredible. I went to that game right. uh, this year in well, one December when they played that Monday night game or it was a Thursday night. I yeah. forget which it was. And it was like the 45, 43. Do you remember that game? Yeah. And, and he just yeah, like, fun. it was amazing. It was the, it was the NFL game of the year actually. Yeah. And um, what well, depends what news media outlet you're talking to, but it was a lot of them were like, Oh, it's game of the year. Right. Yeah, I, watching that guy pick the Browns apart, and he had like a stomach bug, so he was going into the locker room because he had the, yeah. he had the chachis, right. <laughs> and um, then he would come out and like run the ball for sixty yards against us and, and break our back. But to to know that that guy, to know that your guy's elite, I'm not saying he's Lamar Jackson, but what I'm saying is that's a hard style, obviously, to go to the next level. And now it's he's got to be more pass centric now, yeah. right? You, gotta, you, you, yeah. you have to be, you have to be, right? Um, yeah. Can mm-hmm. I step out on a limb real quick? Are you ready for me? Are you ready for this? Absolutely. Yeah. I think he's the second best. Yeah. Wadsworth football wrestling crossover. That's all I'm gonna say, because my number one's from my era, Bobby Jones, and yeah. and he's, Bobby Jones has to career play in the NFL. Played in the NFL. Who did he yeah. play for the uh, Giants? Yeah. Played for Penn State. Played for the Giants. 
Penn State, yep. And then he went to the Giants, and they played in the Pittsburgh a little bit before he was done. Long so. snapper. He became a long snapper. Yep. Didn't long he? snapper, yeah. I mean, played for Joe Bater. I mean, just he's such a cool guy talking he, to he lives around Bobby him, Jones. He? he still watches yeah, he, yeah, he probably lives two minutes from me. Uh, you know, still get together with him, still – Loves Wadsworth wrestling. He's always around when he can be. Just, uh, just a really cool guy. He's got a son now who's a freshman. Is who's he a big, uh, lanky dude? Is he a big, tall dude like his dad? He's tall, and, and he's a running back So as of right now. so But he is a heck of a – he's going to be a heck of a player too. I love it. So, Bobby yeah. Jones about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's big guy. To something. Then he went into MMA for a while and, and did really well. And then yeah, you uh, guys had just, the one guy that went into MMA from Wadsworth. Did the guy pass away, Hendricks? No he he had a he had a very scary accident. Um, he he was in he fought in the UFC, wrestled for Oklahoma State for two years for John Smith, and then he was then NCAA went, finalist for Ashland, right? Right. Then went to Ashland and two time All American NCAA finalist and uh another great guy. And he's he was some freak accident cooking a pizza and fell what? asleep and yeah, burnt his what? house his apartment started smoking and um the he lady came there. down and lady came down and saved his life no from way. up above him. Is it Hendricks? He was in the, Josh Hendricks, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember him. He was tough. Yeah. He had wow, a scary you guys thing. Got guys, you got guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, that is wild. Because I remember him. He wrestled Jim Sweater. Jim Sweater was on my yeah. team at Kent, and and I, I remember he transferred from Oklahoma State. And I think him and Sweater yeah. went one and one. They went back and forth, but he was tough. And then Bobby, did Bobby enter end up wrestling at Penn State for Troy Sunderland? He did. He he did his four years football, or maybe it was his fifth year. Then he he walked he walked on and wrestled. He made the national tournament. Didn't wrestle for four years. Walked on. Bobby made, Jones made the days. He did. And then he then he started. It. He uh went try to get into the world trials and do freestyle. He he just loves to compete. He's just a That's crazy. Freak. Doesn't care. You know he'll do whatever. He loves just to compete. You know I love so, it. I love. It. And he yeah. was G's. He's was he G's first state champ? I believe he was. First state champ. Yep. Okay. So he was G's first state champ. I think G took over in the late 80s, I want to say, right? Yeah. Uh, Does that sound right? Maybe I want to say like 84. 80, was it mid 80s? Mid, I would say more mid 80s. Yep. Okay. Mid 80s. So mid 80s. And you guys, your school is like a Taj Mahal. I cannot believe it. From what it was to what it, and you still got the same gym though, right? The gym, did they just redo the gym? No, they actually – when they built our new school, though, they wrecked everything. That, re- that is gym. not – that is a new gym. Brand new gym, brand new rest. Everything's new. Uh, probably like eight years old now. That Seven gym is years. similar to the other gym, though, because you have the – yes. So that's, yep. that's my confusion then. seems like – They the loved that, yeah. Yeah, was, they loved yeah. the layout. So they try to keep it the same. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, so that gym hosts – I want to talk about this – that gym is the host of the toughest one-day tournament in the state of Ohio, the, the Grizzly Invitational, right? Yeah. I, mean, it's, I think it's getting tougher this year. Uh, Sam Brandenburg, Sheldon's dad, he, he puts it together. We just got Detroit Central Catholic. Ooh. It's coming. Ooh. I know. So the problem with that, the only problem with that is no PA teams. Yeah. We, yeah. So we go, yeah, Detroit Central Catholic, Perry, Wadsworth, LaSalle, Aurora, Graham. Go get Dundee. Go get Dundee. I'll tell you what, because that's that's what you have to do. When you commit to a Michigan team, do you know their horrible rule set? No. Do you know their idiotic moron? <laughs> I ask all their coaches about it. I'm like, you have the dumbest, most restrictive rule ever. So they've got a distance. It's a distance. It's a distance within the border of their state. So they're not allowed to compete like the, like Mitch, uh, what's it? So many miles. Yeah. Yes. So they were going to try and meet Blair and like Pittsburgh somewhere. Mitch Hancock told me this. I was like, Oh my God, they were going to give them like a waiver or some, it was ridiculous. Anyhow, 
they are not allowed to wrestle teams that don't touch their state within a certain mileage. And I'm like, wow. what a moronic, awful, <laughs> stupid rule. So I don't think Reynolds can come now. Reynolds, you guys got to be mindful of that. Reynolds cannot come. Yeah. Now. Reynolds is not allowed yeah, to they, come to the – well, hold on. Reynolds can come. DCC is just out there. So, yeah. did you know that? Yeah, I, I didn't know that rule. But I know Reynolds, they have come before and they're not now. Yeah, because so. what's his name won at uh, – Steen won your tournament two years ago at six. Yeah. He's yeah. going to Penn State now. He's pretty tough. Yeah, he yeah, got some defense soap for it. He got a bar of defense soap. It's no big deal. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I got to get you guys some. No, more yeah, stuff. it's a. Yeah, no, we appreciate you. Thanks well, I'm trying to get back out though. I'm trying to get back out. It didn't work out this year, but I'm trying to get back out. And the the yeah. format of the GIT this year, like all tournaments leading up to the sectional district state, was either some type of pool, or you guys did yeah. duels. Isn't that what it was? What What'd you guys do? We ended up doing a pool. Yeah, so you guys did pool. We only had four teams, but we made it a pool rather than duels, just to give. Yeah, it a what were the four format. teams? What were the four teams? Graham, LaSalle, Wadsworth, and Perry. It was, it was a <laughs> heck of a day. That's a pretty tough day. Come on, <laughs> come on, man. Yeah. That's a pretty tough day. Like think about one forty-five. <laughs> There's some pretty good yeah. one forty-five punters in those four schools you just said. I mean, Absolutely. fifty-two. Think about a bunch of those weights. They're seventy. Seventy had yeah. to have been a barn burner. Yeah, Messer didn't win it. He lost to Walker. Walker and Walker yeah. was third. Yeah. Right? And yep. Messer won it. Messer yep. won the state. Messer won it. Yep. So think but about Walker that. beat him think, earlier. Yeah. Think about how you got him that look in his home gym. He gets beat in his home gym. Yeah. Think about what that did for him at that state tournament. Absolutely. Changed his whole he changed from that point on. I mean 100%. it was a heck of a match. Yeah. There you go. That was his only loss, first loss. And he had, he had to adjust. He made huge adjustments after that day. He was all zoned in and made a lot of changes, and then he kind of went on a roll there. Can I just tell you that I think Dylan Walker is going to be special at Mercyhurst? I think he's going to be really good. Oh, yeah. He, he's, he's an awesome He's crafty. Wrestler. He's really oh. crafty. He wrestles like a PA yeah. guy. Yeah, he's very what's, good. What's Messer, what's Messer doing? What's, what's Messer doing next? What are, your, what are your guys doing who are all – What's your state champ doing? What are your guys doing? Well, who's returning? Who's going off to college for, for Wadsworth next year? Yeah, so Messer and uh, John List, who John was uh, fourth in the state. He's going to – they're both going to George Mason with the Palma. And then uh, Landon Hacker, who is a three-time state placer for us. COVID year, he's a qualifier. He's going to Virginia. And then uh, Mikey Lowarczyk, who was fourth in the state this year going to uh um kent so did you know that do they know they're allowed to go to d2s and d3s do they know that or do they all just think or did you did clay wanger make them all d1 snobs what's going on here clay come on i'm, I'm for wherever they want to go they just those were that was their goals and hey i just try to help them put them in the right place so Th that's good on you excited though, for those guys that's cool that's good on you no, you know what I mean? You want them to go to the highest level they can go to. And all of all four of those guys who chose that, who is at Indiana right now? Luke Boffman. Noah. Luke Boffman. Noah. Indiana. Yep. And then Michael North, we have out in Maryland. He's a, he's, a he's our team captain. Yeah. He's wow. their team captain as a freshman. So. Um, do you have any guys yeah. in D2 though? Like I joke about it, but do you have any D2 guys right now that off the top of your head? No, we got Jordan Ernest at OU. We have National Cody Qualified Surratt. Heavyweight. Yep. As a freshman. Cody Surratt just grew. Yeah. As a freshman. Surratt. Uh, let Cody the Surratt just pins on and off, right? Yep. Let's talk yep, about just Surratt. Graduated from Air Force. Let's just talk yeah. about that. What he did going to the Air Force Academy, first off, that's incredible. Because I talk yeah. about the academies a lot. I don't think people really get what the what it takes, Clay, to do the academies. Have you ever really had an opportunity no, to sit down and talk with him about the, the intense yeah. structure in Colorado Springs at the uh, Air Force Academy? Yeah, I, I, I have. I have a real good relationship with Cody. Um, so his freshman year was hard. He was – I don't think he – I don't think he knew that he could maybe do it, you know. And we had some long talks, and 
Um, he, I mean, he told me what he went through. And I mean, like you said, it takes a special person to, to do it. Um, but to see him then now do what he, he – all he's come – he didn't have the best freshman year. Not his grades weren't as the be- – not bad, but not the best. Wrestling was hard. Everything was hard. Being away from home, the extra workouts. But now he's became an NCAA qualifier, team captain. And, uh, you know, he got his first choice. He wanted to be a pilot. He, wants to, he wanted to fly. And, you know, he excelled at those tests. And he's, he's going to be a pilot for the Air Force. So what an what a awesome guy. And, I mean, he just – and you knew he could do it, just knowing him as a competitor, his work ethic, his leadership it is tremendous. So I, you knew, I knew he could do it. It's just – it's a struggle, like you said. I mean, there's not many that can do it. It's hard. But cool to see him now, and, he, and he's so happy, so excited. It's just good for him. Super structured, obviously, 24-7, uh, about 10 to 11 months out of the year. They do get some time off, actually. But yeah. the benefits of an academy, I just don't think people get it. You're getting paid, and you're getting an Ivy League-type education, and the the United States federal government is investing a bunch of money in you. Now, here's the other thing. Some, some academy people get after me like, whoa, they, they got a five-year commitment, or I think it's, it's five-year. I believe it's a five-year. So they yeah. got to do their four years. Well, if you're smart, you can do a prep year like Connor Witt did. Yeah. I went to that prep school. It is small, and it's right on the edge of the campus. Uh, it's just <laughs> south of the main campus. Yeah. Um, it, it, dude, it is small. It's like a little high school almost. Um, wow. But the wild thing about all that is, you, yes, there's five years of service. But you come out, and that five years of service, you're the boss. You're an officer. Yeah. Right. You're telling enlisted people who are enlisted people for 20-plus years, you can be their boss. And I just, like – I struggle when a lot of those people who, you know, graduates are like, oh, no, no, it's, it's a commitment. I'm like, well, yeah, absolutely it's a commitment. We get that. But think about the commitment that a guy like me, I borrowed like $22,000 to go to college, right? Right. Got some scholarship money and borrowed the rest, right? I, you know, I got like some super crazy low interest rate, interest rate, and um, which is not what it is today. It's predatory mm-hmm. lending to a degree for a lot of these kids now. To be able to get a world-class education, travel all over the world, okay? They pay you a stipend that increases year by year, right? And then you give them five years where they make you a boss, right? I mean, I I just don't see any drawbacks to it. I just don't see – I just – it can only be positive. So say you only give them your, your nine years. I believe it's nine years. It could be eight, but I think it's nine. They then – they're like, oh, I'm done with this. I, I hate being in the military, right? But they did their nine years. They're going out and getting whatever job they want. Think That's about who right. they met, the people, the connections they made, yeah. it, whether it was in the academy, whether if it was in athletics or not, whether it was being deployed. Think about the people and the friendships and the lifelong bonds that they make with people. It, it just, I, yeah, I just, I, I'm, I'm obviously super high on the academies, if you can't tell. No, I, I am too. I think it's, I mean, they're set. Like you said, they're set for life. They, it just takes a tough guy. We just had another guy graduate. He was Cody's year. He was a team captain with Cody, Matt McMillan. He's going to go, went to the Naval Academy. He did not wrestle, but he, he but was that a doesn't matter. Us, Here's, that wrestler. doesn't matter because, yeah. because you're still on a stipend. You're still on, you're given the service for yeah. the full ride. So, so yes, there's a trade off for that full ride. But think about the people who take out hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars in student loans. Right. And think about it, Clay. Think about what school's going to be like for your daughters and my sons. If they let them, if they let these colleges oh, continue gosh. to price gouge, think about it. Like our options, your option is going to be Stark State. How far are you guys yeah. from Stark State? 20 minutes? Not far. Yeah, we're we're close. Yeah, close to Stark. Yeah, twenty minutes. Yeah. So Wayne my College, option could be which, Lakeland yeah. or Cuyahoga Community College for my like. We're not going to be able to afford to send them to four year schools. It's becoming inaffordable. So I just think that that becomes a more and more 
uh, appealing option. But like you said, you got to be a special person. Now they're you do. they're not giving out those appointments like they're they're not giving them out like Valentine's in the first grade. It's not like that. <laughs> right. not, not it's not it. like yeah. it's not like Zeb handing out Ohio stickers at a at a tournament. It's not like that. They're they're hard to come by. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. Um, it's cool though. Yeah, it's cool, definitely. Why so many D1 guys? Why are so many Wadsworth guys so driven to be D1? Why, you know, I'm, I, I joke with you, and I'm, I like the D2. I've been covering D2 a lot more. But why so many Wadsworth guys in D1? Yeah, hey, I'm with you. I love D2, D3. I love the coaches. I have so many good relationships with a lot of them guys. I, I just think our guys, they've wrestled for so long. And, you know, I can think to myself, you know, you start loving wrestling, you have some success. You know, you're watching the NCAAs, you're watching, you know, all this stuff on flow, all the stuff you put out, you know, listening to all these elite guys and you want to be them. Yeah. You have the goal to do what they do. And, you know, they're D1 wrestlers. And I think these guys set the goal at a young age that, Hey, I want to go wrestle division one. I'm going to, I want to put myself in that, in those guys' shoes. I want to, I want to be that. And I, I give them credit for sticking to it. it it's not an easy thing to accomplish. It's not an easy thing to do. And, you know, for so for many years, they believe that and keep striving to do it. And I just love to see them doing it. You know, I know all those guys that I named earlier, that was their goal from a middle school. And they kept believing it, and here they are. You know, they have the opportunity now to, to, to be something elite, you know, that they see on TV, which is, which is fun. What do you think? Ne- what is next for you guys? Do you send a lot of guys to Fargo? Do you uh, just try and get guys to Disney duels? Where do you guys go next? I know that you and G, when you were a high schooler, came to Burnett trained. I believe you do some Jordan Absolutely. trained stuff. What do you guys do for the yeah. summer for you guys to be so elite? I know Todd Haverdell goes to Fargo, right? I know Eric yeah. Brack goes to Fargo. I know St. Edge usually has somebody on staff that goes to Fargo. What do you do in the off season to build such an elite program like you guys have at Wadsworth Clay? Yeah, I mean, you got to compete. You know, we we uh, this is one of our this group right now we have coming is going to be I think a fun group. They're young, but they love to compete. They love to wrestle. So, I mean, we're going to the qual all the qualifiers around. We got a, a 10, 12 going to state this weekend. You know, guys wrestling the state duels. You know, any any opportunity they get. They're jumping on it, and we're pushing them to jump on it now. You know, we go to just team duels. You know, when we go to Ashland Crestview, Haverdale's brother, we're going to go there in a couple weeks to get our younger guys some matches. So I think just getting experience competing and learning right now is, is so big. And we do a lot of team building and leadership stuff and, you know, getting the guys together and, um, you know, having that bond too, I think it's really special and, in the off season and, and finding who your next leader is finding who who's going to lead the team and, and be your next big dog, you know, to, you know, do great things. And I think that's what keeps happening and people keep stepping up and, you know, following in the shoes of the people in front of them. So, you know, that's our focus, competing, training, enjoying it, but, you know, building a good team atmosphere and, and seeing the leadership we have. Your AirPods hate your ears guts. Yeah, they, they don't <laughs> the, you what you got to need those. I got these. Those. Like, uh, here's what I got. Look what I got. You get this. <laughs> you get like there's like a, a and it's like they're these Sony ones. Yeah, the little gum, like little gel, yeah, little, like it's like a silicone or whatever yeah. it is. That is the way to go. I have those. I got a couple Bluetooth ones, and you know I don't look like a snob like that. you. Like I'm like I'm a uh, an elitist wearing my AirPods around. And my mangled ears sticking out all weird. Come on, Clay. Come on, Clay. Be better. Be better, Clay. Okay. So, you guys, you, you've had a lot of families come through. A lot of families. You know, we already talked about the Boffmans, which is two separate families. Yeah. But they, they, yeah. both sides of those families have been highly successful for you. Two guys that aren't even related. Same last name. One's Mr. Ohio in football, four-time state placer. The other guy's a two-time state champ. Am I, did I have that right? You're correct. Uh, yep. That's that, that's crazy, right? Yeah. The K lives, multiple state champs. The K lives. Some of them coach have coached you guys. You've yep. had you've had a lot of families. You've had a lot of families come to the Squires, right? 
where it's multiple boys, right? How do you do that? How do you keep these family members kind of like the pipeline with family members going at Wadsworth? Yeah. I mean, a lot, you know, like you said, squires, fours, ball. I mean, they're fours. Forgot them. They like to lift weights. Yep. They love it. Um, Big, big sponsors to the pro. They're good. Great to, to the program. Um, I, I think it's just keeping the relationship with the alumni. Um, looking at our youth now, we have all these guys, G coached, are back with their kids, and, and they're up, they're coming through now. And that's what's cool. Like now that I'm seeing it, those guys were obviously older when I was there, but um, you know, uh, Zach Kali, he he's got a young one. He's coming. His he's coaching our youth. Um, Chance Riley was a he was a little guy for G. He was a state player. He's got a little kid down there. Um, just a lot of those guys are, are starting to come back. Luke Buson, just a ton of names, and I think that's what it is. Um, keeping that alumni base, keeping those relationships. And, I mean, obviously hoping they have boys, but they're going to bring their kids. They want to be a part of Wadsworth. I think they knew they know what that did for their lives, and they want their kids to, to have that same experience. So G's great at it. And he's taught me how to be and keeping those relationships and talking to your, your parents and your former wrestlers and, you know, just keeping the, keeping it rolling. You said it, not me. You said, oh, they, we, you know, they all have boys or they hope, we hope they have boys. Will the Wenger girls be wrestling? No, probably not. A wife wouldn't, she doesn't, she won't want that. So your wife, if they want to, gonna... they'll wrestle. But okay, I, I, I like I like that you didn't take it off the table. Thank you very much. I like yeah. that. But if it's up to your wife, it doesn't sound like it's going to happen. No, but if, if they want to do it, great. I'll I'll uh, I'll support it. Whatever they want to do, they're they're starting soccer now. I mean, I don't know if they're going to be tough enough for wrestling. They're struggling with soccer right now. So. <laughs> we'll see, Clay. I mean, it's too early <laughs> yeah. to tell. Like I got two I know. boys. They actually. The little one likes his face getting hamburgered. <laughs> um, I think he's going to be all right. I think the older one, older one's actually pretty skilled at it. But it's just like it's so early, man. They could yeah, have, yeah, yeah, you don't know. I don't <laughs> care. I'm not going to put that on. I think yeah. that's unhealthy. I'm always picking everybody's brain, though, like a lot of Tommy Rollins. Every time I can get, my, get in a conversation with Tommy Rollins about it, he's super purposeful about everything he does. Everything is for a purpose that the Rollins did. They're not just doing stuff to do it. Like tonight, yeah. uh, the room wasn't going to be open or something. And I was like, hey, guys, you want to go tonight or do you want to watch Thor? They're like, no, let's watch a movie, Dad. And I was like, we're going to watch a movie. They're three and five. <laughs> They're three and five. We right. watched, right. I like periodically rat- napped through like uh, some Thor movie, The Dark, I don't know, where there's this guy, these black elves or something. I don't know. The dark elves. I don't know. I don't know. I was periodically sleeping through it, but the, you know, they wanted to watch a movie. They wanted to watch a movie. We wrestled uh, afterwards, right? We did some scrapping afterwards, and then they smacked faces, forehead to, to nose, you know. So I think yeah. just keeping them active and being rough and tumble is good. Yeah. I asked Travel. I had Travel on a couple of weeks ago. Just like to hear people's perspective on it. You know what I mean? I think it's super important to let them do what they want. And not even yeah, in this like absolutely. liberal hippie jam fest. Yeah, everybody just do whatever you want. Yeah. No, I mean like yeah. let them gravitate to what they want to do. I mean, you parent your kids, you love your kids, yeah, yeah. You, you you instill discipline in them. My wife makes them put the dishes away every night. They help me out yeah. in the yard. They help me stack wood. They help me do things, right? But I think I that the same way. pushing them into something is just the kiss of death. I think it's just yeah easy. no I, I I yeah I just think you put a give them opportunities and yeah like you said see what they gravitate to hey as long as they're working hard they enjoy what they're doing and I think that goes a long way you know so yeah. whatever that is for my girls we're we're throwing them in a lot of different stuff right now just to see where what they like but as long as they're working for it that's that's what I care about. We're on the 10 minute warning right now. I keep checking the clock because man, we had Anthony Ashton all on one night and I kept him for like an hour and 48 minutes and he was actually <laughs> cool about it. He was like, yeah, this is the barbarian hour and 48 minutes. And I was like, Oh, okay. We like to be mindful of your guys' time, but uh, 
what's the roadmap? Draw me up the roadmap, whether it was from 2010. How do you emulate 2010? I know you're not 2010. I get it. But how do you emulate or try and build a team like that to knock off Illyria, St. Ed's, Perrysburg's coming, Braxville? How do, you, how do you get to a level and how do you emulate what those guys did? What you did, <laughs> you were on the team. Yeah. What you guys did in 2010, how do you emulate that as the head coach at Wadsworth now? Give me the roadmap to knock off St. Ed's and knock off LaSalle and knock off Liberty, who's emerging, and uh, Kaufman, who's really good. Yeah, really. Kaufman beat you guys for third and yeah. fourth, didn't they, at, at state duels? They did. Van they Gundy's did. doing a great they job there. But yeah, how do you guys oh my gosh. tell me? Tell me the the roadmap. Give it to me. Yeah, I mean, look, you just named a ton of good teams, and I think that that that's what keeps you uh, keeps you going. I mean, look at all the teams you have to fight against year after year and compete against, and we, we just got to keep believing and, and know that it can be done, which our, our guys do that. They, they know it can be done. They've seen it and they just got to believe in it with the, the roadmap set, you know, we got to compete in the off season. We got to get better. We got to take time. We got to get to Burnett's. We have to go see coach Haverdale. Yeah. You know, we want to beat those guys, but those are also great people to train with and, and take advantage of. I, I talked to coach Haverdale a lot this this off season, you know, getting our guys to on his uh, state dual team, putting ourselves in good situations around good people. And, and we have it here at Wadsworth, but we got to go around too and be around other guys and just compete. You know, you get sometimes Russell, the same guy every day, you know, maybe we're not giving our, our 110%. So we got to get out there and, and compete, you know, in, in events, but also in the practice room too, day in and day out. So, they just got to keep believing it, it's there. They know it's there. It just takes a lot of hard work and trusting in themselves and the coaches and just, you know, fought, like we said, following the process that, you know, that's in front of them. Okay. Todd Haverdell has no hobbies. Does Clay Wenger have hobbies? No. Russ, just wrestling, you know. Wrestling junkie. Work. Oh, Okay. So, so go figure, Todd Haverdale and uh, uh, Clay Wanger, better rivals. Both super nice guys, actually. No hobby guy. And daughters. And daughters. And both guys. Yeah, he we does, got five daughters he? between yeah. these two dudes who got zero hobbies. How does that happen? What yeah. are we doing here, Clay? Come on. Oh. Hey, you know, they go shopping and I, I go to wrestling. That's kind of how I roll. Okay. My wife goes and gets a little shopping done and – I do some wrestling, but no, it's fun. But no, I just, I love it. I love doing it. You, you know, fish, it's, you don't fish, you don't hike, you don't do anything. No, I don't. Nothing. I mean, I'm either playing Barbies or, you know, wrestling. <laughs> I love it. I, I know that you're probably doing that is what's awesome about it. Uh, oh, is, is it, is it over? Is the, is the Wenger family capped at four? You're a young no. man. You're a young man, Clay. Yeah. Maybe a hope for one more boy. Uh, one more time, to try to get a boy. But okay. I don't but know. If, but if you go full Todd Haverdell and have a third girl, I'm guessing you'll be cool <laughs> with it. I, oh, absolutely. I, I love it. I, I do. They're fun. They are fun. Yeah. Um, so either way, kids. you just gotta love your. If yeah. you love your kids. No, I mean, how can't you love your kids? What kind of absolutely. psychopath you gotta be to not love your kids? They are uh, fun. Fun girls. Did you? What are you doing now? What's your job now? What is your full-time job? Yeah, uh, I'm at uh, – so I'm at a behavior school that is connected to Wadsworth. They so you're on us, campus. I, I'm a little off campus, so I but got – you're Wadsworth, right there. All, yeah, yeah, right around. Right could you there. just walk right th- – could you walk to the wrestling room in five minutes if you wanted to? Uh, probably not a walk, probably a drive. Drive, but, okay. Yeah, but it's right there. You know, we're in contact. I mean, it, it, it works out well. So I enjoy what I enjoy what I do. You know, they're, these kids are getting expelled and they're coming to, to me and we're trying to get them through to get back to school, to be able to be functional at school. Um, so I enjoy it. it. It's very easy. It works well with being there and, you know, just, I have good relationships with all the Wadsworth teachers, administrators, they're all phenomenal. So uh, it works great, you know, 
we know, I know all the time what our guys are doing. And, you know, we have other coaches on staff that are in this school at all, all times. So it, it's great. It works out really good. What is your degree? I actually have a business degree. So you don't that even have what an I wanted to degree? Do. No. Wow, so I did not know that. With this, I can do – yeah, I went for business. I, I actually, when I left, I – my aunt owned a company and I was, I wanted to do that and take that over. And then I just wanted to get into the, I didn't want it then. You know, I did it for about two years in the business world and, and, the and I liked it. Grizzly scooped you up and molded you yeah. in this, this, this coach. Yeah. Now. I yeah. It. I mean, that's all that I always wanted to do. So I, I don't know why I took that route. That's just kind of what I did, but now it, it's all working out, you know, that's yeah. all, it's fun. Awesome, Clay. I love hearing it. Uh, we are getting to the end of our time. We're, in the, we're under the five-minute mark here. Two-minute warning, actually, to be honest with you. Yeah. Do you have anything else for me? No, Zeb. Hey, I appreciate you. I think thanks for always putting, you know, what you know, being a part of Wadsworth and you know, supporting us and love what you guys do with this. I enjoy listening and listening to all the great people you bring on. It's awesome. Thanks for promoting wrestling. As much I'm, as you do. I'm Hopefully, I see pumped. you soon, Zeb. I'm glad you're pumped here. Yeah, I love it. We got we got to get you that. We got to get you that. Yeah. Okay, I love it. Yes, you won. We got to get you. Obviously, these guys got stickers. We got I defense. Yeah. Oh, we got That's, hollows. I, I, Ohio, oh, go Ohio's got hollows. We got it all. We got it all. Thank you for the time. Yeah, Maybe thanks, Zeb. Thirty seconds of your time afterwards. Let me cut this, Clay Wanger. Yeah. My guy, Wadsworth Wrestling. Check it out. Whole thing, pretty good. Good conversation here on the Barbarian Hour. Stick around, Clay. Oh, check out the barbarianapparel.com. Summer, summer's coming. It's camp season. And Josh Sasfi is ready to make some deals, folks. We're out. Hello, wrestlers and coaches. I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA. 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice.